Oh, hello. This is Tak Chong from Walk with Tak. I welcome to my YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. If you are new to cooking and you would like to have all the benefits of home cooking that we bring to you, you come to the right place. I have developed a new cooking system, and I call it the fast cooking system to help you to make home cooking as part of your daily routine. And the word fast is the acronym for flavor chasing, advanced prepping, stir frying, and template based cooking. A stir frying is the heart of the cooking system because it allows you to cook with speed, efficiency, and flexibility. This cooking system has the best of both worlds. It not only makes food taste good, but it also、uh, gives you the most health benefit. In order to achieve success in this cooking system,、uh, you need to become proficient in stir frying. A stir frying may be simple on the surface, but it is more complicated and involved, and than what it meets the eyes. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about heat management during stir frying. Recently, a viewer asked me this question. She said that I am a beginner cook, and I would like to know in a step-by-step -step detail of how much heat that I should apply during the stir frying process. This is a very good question. And I would like to use this video、uh, to provide a detailed explanation of how you manage your heat during stir frying. Let me first tell you what's actually going on during stir frying and why it is such a good cooking technique. Let's take a look at the difference between frying and boiling.、Uh, when you cook food by boiling,、uh, the temperature. Of the cooking process will not exceed the boiling point of water, which is 212 degree Fahrenheit. Whereas in the case of frying, the temperature of the food can reach what we call the smoking point of the oil, which is about 450 degree Fahrenheit. Everybody know that frying make food taste better than boiling. At this difference is due to a chemical reaction known as the Maillard reaction. At this chemical reaction is probably the most famous chemical reaction in culinary science. This chemical reaction is important to improve the flavor of the food ingredients that is being cooked. At a temperature between 250. To 300 degree Fahrenheit,、uh, the molecules on the food surface will interact with each other, and they will form molecules that provide flavor to the food. So, any cooking technique that will raise the temperature of the food ingredients、uh, to the temperature zone where the Maillard reaction can take place will make the food taste better.、Uh, therefore, in addition to frying, this includes baking, roasting, grilling. And any other cooking techniques that could achieve this. So it's very clear that cooking food at a high temperature has a lot of benefit. However, there are definitely some negative aspects. First of all, is that when the temperature becomes too high above the smoking point of the oil, the oil will start to dissociate and to form oil film, which is undesirable. And secondly, when the temperature becomes too hot. Food is going to get burned and turn into charcoals, and because of these reasons, in almost all cooking techniques, there is a maximum temperature ceiling that one should not exceed. Therefore, you will not want to do any deep frying at 500 degree Fahrenheit. In fact, most deep fryers the temperature is set at 350 degree Fahrenheit. In fact, there's no reason to take the temperature any higher because this is the temperature where the Maillard reactions will take place. However, stir frying seems to be an exception because the amount of heat that you see when people do stir frying is completely off the chart. In commercial kitchens, some of the stir frying stove can produce as much as several hundred thousand BTUs. As in conventional home kitchen stove, the maximum BTU that can be produced by a burner is usually within twenty thousand BTU. The reason is that stir frying is an exceptional cooking technique when it comes to heat management, mainly because the food is being constantly stirred in the wok. 
Uh, this will allow the food to cook quickly, evenly, as well as avoid from being burned. Uh, this is then become a race uh, between the stirring and the amount of heat that is being applied to the food ingredients. If you are able to stir fast enough, you can cook a dish in an instance. Uh, so what about the oil film that being generated in such a high heat? But you don't have to worry about it if you have an excellent exhaust fan. I still remember during the years when I worked in a Chinese restaurant as a college student, I still remember how fast food could be cooked without being burned. So let's translate this into a home kitchen, which definitely do not have this kind of a high power burner in the kitchen stove, also uh, will not have the industrial scale ventilating hood. But you still want to take advantage of the speed that provided by stir frying. As well as to create flavor in the food ingredients uh, generated by the Mela reactions uh, in that temperature zone. In the following, I'm going to provide you with some practical guidelines how to achieve the maximum benefit of stir frying in your home kitchen. And the first guideline is to use the maximum heat that can be provided by a burner of a conventional home kitchen range. And the most powerful burner in a conventional home kitchen range usually provide under 20,000 BTU, with many provide significantly less. And this will allow to cook with reasonable speed and to take advantage of the stir-frying cooking technique. And the second guideline is to heat up the oil as hot as possible, usually right at the edge of their smoking point, because this is the highest temperature the oil can reach. And the best way to achieve that is to watch the oil carefully when you heat up the oil. As soon as it starts to smoke, uh, you know that it has reached the highest temperature it could, and this is the time you can add the food ingredients to the wok. Uh, keep your stove at the highest setting. In fact, you can do that throughout the entire cooking process. Because once you add the food ingredients to the wok, the temperature of the oil will drop rapidly. As you continue with the cooking, the temperature of the oil will come back again. If you constantly stir the food ingredients, the oil will never go back to the smoking point again. However, at this point, make sure you have a thin layer of oil sitting at the bottom of the wok. During this time period, you should constantly stir your ingredients to prevent them from getting burned. If you are unable to stir them as rapidly as you would like, then you should turn down the heat. And when you cook fried rice in the wok, the rice could be difficult to stir because of their bulk, and some of them might sit at the bottom of the wok and they can get burned. And this is probably the only time I would turn down the heat of the stove. Otherwise, I would cook the entire session with the heat setting at the highest of the burner. Obviously, there are variations in heat capacity of different burners. Uh, the basic guideline to these differences is exactly the same. Always cook them at the highest setting. Uh, stir your ingredients constantly and as rigorously as you could. Uh, during the stirring process, make sure recycle all the food ingredients through the center of the wok uh, because this is where the heat resides. And when you use a burner with high heat capacity, the food will cook faster. And when you have a stove with low heat capacity, obviously the food will cook slower. I have cooked on stoves that produce 100,000 BTU, and then I also have cooked on stoves that produce less than 7,000 BTU. And by making adjustment to these differences in heat capacity, the outcome of the food is actually not that different. If you have further questions, please put a comment below or email me at walkwithtalk at gmail.com. I post a video every day to help you to make 
home cooking as part of your daily routines using my fast cooking system. If you'd like to learn more about this cooking system, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. So keep on cooking. I will see you tomorrow.